first, but that was an error. So this is our second special common council meeting of this term. Um, would the clerk please call the roll? Alderperson Boren. Here. Here. Donahue. Here. Feldy. Ackley. Here. Phillips. Here. Decker. Here. Sorensen. Here. Savaglio. Present. Mitchell. Here. There are eight elders participating. Oh, Barb. Barb. Feldy. Present. Okay, there are nine elders participating. Very good, thank you. Next, I ask you to please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda is public forums. Assistant City Clerk. Mike Burnett, you can step up to the podium ahead. Can you please state your address? 1925 South 26th Street. Okay. You have five minutes to speak. All right. Squid Pro Quo 2, City Administrator 3. About the same amount of mayors that we've had in the same time. And pretty much every argument everybody had going into the whole city administrator mayor thing was longevity, consistency. If we have a city administrator, they're going to be there forever. That's going to make everything uniquely great because they'll have that perspective. That's out of the way on to step two. And it's like last time when I came up and spoke, it was pretty much the same thing. You had a, you had a former council member, this time it's a current council member, that is about, you're about to go into closed door session. You're going to discuss, he is going to resign. You're gonna go into closed door session. You're gonna discuss the personnel matters regarding salary and whatever. And then according to the thing, you're going to offer Todd the job. This is not dissing on you, Todd. It's the practice of administration. And it's like you are also going to suspend the rules, which is a very, very, very Sheboygan thing. But that circumvents the whole process, should be used for emergencies. And I don't know, I mean, I knew about this for a month at least. You probably knew longer. I don't, I don't know what it is. But bottom line is the search is over. It's done. Todd's the new city administrator and not officially but it's what it's going to be. And that's all fine. If that's what you want to do, it's what you want to do. But it kind of makes, a ridic it makes the argument of having to have an administrator and a mayor an obvious ridiculous one. Because its bottom line is, not only do you have all those extra costs generated in there, but it's one of those, back in the day, the mayor had those duties and some, sure, they're done, the mayor is, was on top of the chart, and it went down, and you had finance people, you had your public works, you have whatever, just like you do now. Nothing's changed. But it basically, at the top, we have a completely unaccountable, un by the public, unelected official. And in this case, it's basically, it's a councilman jumping over from being councilman, jumping over the top of the mayor, and becoming city administrator. And it's like, and if our councilmen had these skills, which I believe they do, not to, everybody has all the same skills to a degree, but it's like, what upsets me is there is no updates with anything about, as far as I know about anything, with what's going on. And other than me finding out that our city administrator is leaving, which is good for him, whatever he's doing, I'm happy he's doing, go, moving on. I'm not happy, I mean, I thought he did a great job. 
That isn't the point. But, you, but everything gets handled behind the scenes. And in, in reality, this is a city government. I mean, and we're supposed to do what the people want. And it's like we're supposed to get things done. And I disagree with Todd on a whole mess of things, but that's not even really the point of this other, whether I agree or disagree, whatever, on topics, that doesn't matter, because technically, according to the org chart or whatever, he's an, he will be an administrator, which means he's not making day-to-day -day decisions, but we all know, in reality, that's a big part of what administration is, and he who sets the table, he who sets the agenda, and whatever. But going into it, the last time we went around, I think it was an Alderman Rinflesh, and it's kind of like, and I spoke, and I said, squid pro quo, how he's getting it. But honestly, I knew Daryl was pretty much assured of getting that job. Here, there's not even another candidate at this point. We'll never know who the other candidates are. And I'm literally talking to probably 15 people totally, because nobody even knows this is going on. But I still thought it was worth voicing that concern with the procedure and the whole thing. And it's because one of those, why do we still need the different layers? What's changed? What's this? What's that? You have 30 seconds. All right. And bottom line is, here we go again. And this is Sheboygan all over again. And it's, and it's kind of like the community has zero clue what's going on, and yet, and yet here we go. And it's like that in virtually every decision. And it's like there's no rebuttal. There's no argument. Have fun in your closed session. I'm going home. Thank you, Mike. I need to take a step back on the agenda and uh, ask for approval of the minutes, entertain a motion to approve the minutes uh, from the sixth council meeting uh, held on June 15th. Make a motion to approve. Second. Sorry. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll go on uh, to item, uh, we're going to skip item 3.1. Uh, we've had some discussion within the council, and we're not going to go into closed session. So item 3.2 uh, is going to be an interview with the final candidate for city administrator. To start things out, I'd like Alderperson Donahue, uh, our council vice president, to review the interview process that brought uh, us to our final candidate. Alderperson Donahue. Three point one. I thought we're skipping 2 .1. over. Two point one. Two point one. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, next is uh, is item two point one, and this is a resignation of Todd Wolf as alder person. Need a motion to ac accept that resignation. I would motion to accept that resignation. It's a motion to receive, actually, and file. That would be a motion to receive and file the. Uh, the um, resignation. Second, Warren. Okay, that motion is on the floor. All those in favor, please. Oh, I'm sorry, we have to call roll on that. Would the city clerk please call the roll? You got your sheet? Oh. <clears throat> I can't get in right now on my computer, so I'm going to have to give you a voice vote of aye. Okay. I'm having the same trouble. Aye from Philip. Okay, Boren. Aye. Nine ayes. Motion passes. Now we'll go on to item 3.2, Alder Person Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> um, just because uh, the information I want to convey at this point is of um, significant importance, I'm going to take my mask down just a little bit with my apologies. Um, what I want to do at this point is review the 
um, pretty much in the extent, uh, the duration, and the content of the uh, hiring process for the city administrator. Um, and if you'll just bear with me, because it's a, it's, a, it's a bit of a report, but um, as we all know, our current city administrator, Daryl Hoffland, notified us on uh, April 27th that uh, he was going to retire from uh, the city department, uh, uh, the, from the city as a city administrator. Um, we uh, reviewed that. Uh, we knew that Daryl would not be with us forever and ever and ever, and we are very sorry to see him go. Um, but we moved uh, immediately into a hiring process uh, in that our time frame uh, to replace uh, Daryl uh, with someone with his skills and, and talent and so forth um, was very short, 60 days. It sounds like a long time, but it really isn't, and I think you'll understand why as I go on. Um, the first thing that we did was we asked Daryl to review the, um, his job description. Are there things that you want to add or subtract based on your four years of experience? Are, th are there different things that we should be doing? And Daryl felt comfortable with the uh, job uh, uh, description uh, as it was written. Um, so uh, we are very lucky to have a new uh, HR director, Vicki Schneider, who was invaluable in this entire process. Um, and um, uh, Vicki, uh, 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 has been very helpful in posing or com uh, composing, I should say, uh, questions that that uh, that we can be asking, um, and um, and she sent those along. It was our intent at that time to interview um, each department head and as well uh, all council members to talk about um, what they would be looking for in a new city administrator. Um, we um, had a discussion on April 30th, a discussion and outline for the hiring process. Um, so we posted the position on uh, a variety of websites. Um, we, don't, we don't do newspapers so much anymore. But uh, the uh, position was posted on Indeed, uh, the Wisconsin uh, City County uh, Administrators Association, the League of Wisconsin Municipalities, the City of Sheboygan website, uh, the the uh, City of Sheboygan LinkedIn and Facebook. Um, I requested that a, a special session of the council be held on May 6th to constitute the hiring committee and to really listen to what alders had to say in terms of what they would be looking for as we were starting the uh, hiring process. Um, Alder started with, I think, the very good news that our city administrator position uh, under Daryl's uh, um, uh, efforts has been highly professionalized. We've really made gigantic strides in the past four years in terms of how the city operates, how we treat each other, how business is being done. Um, <clears throat> in terms of uh, other attributes and values, that council members would be looking for. You told us that you were looking for openness on financial matters. Um, one alder said, I don't want surprises. Um, one alder said that, uh, that he really wanted to speed up what seemed to be a slow pace of change. We talked about the need for a smooth transition, for an administrator who is proactive and has strong development skills. Um, Alders voiced uh, substantial concern about our finance department, uh, the issues that the department faces, and how to resolve those plans. Um, uh, we agreed that the strategic plan process probably needs to be more innovative, and that we needed to look at 21st century methods as we were attempting to solve the problems that the city faces. I thought it was a good meeting and gave a direction to the hiring committee. The hiring committee was Mayor Vandersteen, me, Alderperson Ryan Sorensen, and also um, a retired city administrator from Thienesville, Diane Robertson. Uh, I thank the mayor for his insistence on including an outsider on the hiring team. She was, I think, invaluable uh, in all of our review of applications and our uh, interviews uh, and uh, and, and we thank her for the work that she volunteered for us. Um, 
Between May 7th and May 12th, uh, Mayor Vandersteen uh, and or Ryan and or me met with every uh, individual department head. Um, the, these discussions as well as the findings in the, in the uh, CLA assessment, that's the finance department assessment, uh, were guiding factors in determining the qualities that we need for a new city administrator. I'm gonna share some of the um, some of the uh, responses and insights and concerns that department heads voiced. Um, first of all, uh, they were almost uniformly appreciative of the professionalization of the department and city management uh, in general. Um, in terms of what they would be looking for in a new administrator, they would, would I say they, but you know, these were individual responses. Um, we needed a morale builder, someone with a cheerleading um, uh, uh, personality. Uh, we needed a patient but assertive person, someone who can coach and who has good communication skills, is a good listener who's approachable. Um, a person who would be organized enough to involve departments at early stages, someone who can prioritize, who... Um, uh, has the professionalism and respect that the, the, the position needs. Someone who will engage um, and has team building skills, creating a good culture. Uh, a team environment, um, getting rid of silos that might exist in the current uh, structure. Um, the uh, city administrator needs to roll up sleeves, can't just sit in the office, needs to get out um, and help people own problems uh, as a team. Uh, needs to have command of operational issues. Um, needs to work side by side, um, department heads felt with the administrator, and needed to be involved uh, uh, with all departments. Um, one department head is looking for a person who will step in when things are simmering and not boiling over. Uh, somebody who can rally the troops, understand people, a person who has the ability to uh, take input and make decisions and to act on big decisions. Uh, in terms of specific skills, um, uh, certain skills were outlined, an ability to fully understand the structure of the water department, uh, uh, embrace state debt collection processes, understand economic development and understanding the market, um, handling multiple priorities, an ability to deal with the CLA report, solving IT problems, balancing costs with revenue coming in, um, seeing that the grant and donation policy would be revamped, um, dealing in um, skill sets, pay grades, creating and revamping organizing policies, orientation for new employees, um, Process improvement across departments, um, purchase process, um, for example, or the city wellness initiative, really working on core services, um, uh, getting support uh, for both HR and the finance department, and making uh, resources available and smarter use of IT. Many of these qualities are already present in our city administrator and um, uh, but we felt that this discussion with both council, with you know, all of you here and on the screen, as well as administrators, um, really focused for us the kind of person that we would be looking at in terms of, of a potential new uh, city administrator. Now, as of May 26, 2020, 24 applications um, were uh, received. Um, uh, all of the applicants, all of those applications were reviewed uh, by the search committee, uh, which chose six applicants to interview. The other applicants were basically felt not to meet basic um, job requirements, uh, either in terms of uh, experience, uh, educational background, uh, or the like. Uh, one of those six withdrew. So on June 3rd and June 5th, um, Two can uh, three candidates, uh, let me back up. We interviewed three candidates on June 3rd and two candidates on June 5th.
We did this by Zoom, and for those of us who have done phone interviews as, a, as the first um, uh, <clears throat> measure to determine who goes on in the process, actually the Zoom interviews were terrific and gave us a really good idea of, of, the, of the five candidates who we thought any one of them might be a, a, a good fit for the, um, for the, uh, for the position. Um, our search committee met multiple times um, on Zoom and by telephone, uh, and uh, we reviewed all five applicants to determine which ones we felt would appropriately advance to the second round. And two candidates were chosen to, um, uh, to move forward. Uh, one more application was received. Um, the way our job um, Announcement read was that May 26th would be not the closing date, but the first review date. And um, because we were all already into the process, the June 8th application was not considered. Um, now we did interview uh, both candidates, candidate A and candidate B uh, here in the chambers. Um, those were in-person interviews because we were wearing masks. It was really not quite as satisfying as a Zoom interview, I would have to say. Um, but um, nonetheless, uh, they were more extensive, more in-depth uh, questions, and we spent some time uh, gathering answers and analyzing responses. Um, after each um, interview, uh, we uh, asked all department heads to come into the chambers here and to essentially conduct their own interview of, of each candidate. That process went very well, I thought. Um, so uh, again, our committee met and um, we selected the final candidate who was Todd Wolf. He was one of the two um, uh, who was uh, uh, interviewed in the second interview process. And um, we um, offered him the position, of course, subject to approval of the Common Council. The hiring committee does not get to choose who the new city administrator is. The council gets to choose that. And that candidate, as, as I said, was, was Todd Wolf. We also needed um, a successful completion of background checks, which included drug screen, criminal background check, verification of education, employment, references, credit check. And we also asked Todd to take a psychological and leadership assessment. Um, on so all of that happened between June 12th and June 19th. On June 19th, um, we negotiated a tentative employment agreement with Todd. Um, again, that was a negotiation process back and forth. Uh, and, um, and we reached the agreement that you all have seen on board docs. Uh, there was give and take. Um, uh, some things uh, Todd wanted, he didn't get. Some things we wanted, we didn't get. And it, so in every respect, it was a successful negotiation. So we are here today um, to um, uh, uh, have you, as the council, uh, essentially conduct the third interview uh, to see if Todd Wolf is the candidate that you want as, as, uh, as your um, <coughs> A city administrator. The reasons why the um, search committee is recommending Todd uh, at this point is that we believe he brings a unique blend of both um, business experience and municipal management. Um, we did send out Todd's resume and his cover letter so you can see that he has had extensive business experience particularly with management uh, issues uh, and process issues. <coughs> making things work better. Um, and uh, when he said he was a Lean Six Sigma black belt, I thought that was uh, jujitsu. It's not, it's a management tool, uh, but it is a way that businesses, um, it's a process that businesses undertake to make themselves more efficient and productive. Um, Todd's been around Sheboygan for a long time. Um, he was at Paper Box for a long time and is currently at Kurt Joa. Uh, he has been on the council. He was briefly here uh, as an appointee, uh, left and came back, and he has been on the council since 2015. 
He has been uh, president of the council for the last at least two, maybe three years. Um, he has chaired the Transit Commission, Finance and uh, Personnel. He ch has chaired, does chair now Public Works, the Redevelopment Authority, Marina Parks and Forestry, and Capital Improvements. Um, this unique blend of knowledge of our city and the many challenges facing us, uh, and this is not only in the finance department, which of course is of great concern uh, and is, is a structural problem. Um, we're just facing all kinds of challenges right now. We need to very quickly prepare a budget um, and deal with a, a wide variety of issues. From my perspective, um, Todd is full of good humor and often very bad jokes. He has uh, energy that is, uh, to me, pretty stunning. Um, I think uh, the Energizer Bunny has nothing on Todd Wolf. Um, I have seen him bring full energy to city matters after long days at work. Um, and he has an ability to work with others and make us feel like a part of the team. So it is for those reasons that um, uh, that the search committee is recommending that we hire Todd. Um, Chuck, I will defer to you on this, but it would seem to me uh, we have two decisions to make. One is uh, whether or not we will make an offer to Todd, and then secondly, a review of his contract. Would it be appropriate at this time for me to move um, that uh, Todd be hired as our new administrator? Um, or... Uh, and then the contract be discussed uh, prior to that vote? Or would you suggest another way of dealing with this? So the way that it's set up in the, um, on the agenda is there is a resolution. Um, and the resolution uh, appoints Todd as the administrator and authorizes entering into the employment agreement. So you could use that resolution and you know, make that motion and then uh, talk through both of those sets of issues. Um, if, if you wanted to, I think you can divide the question uh, in the resolution um, if you so choose. Do you have any opinion as to the better way? Um, dividing the question, I mean, it depends on how you divide the question. So, you know, if, if there is a concern that leads an alder to believe that they need to divide the question, I think then then you should do that. Um, but without hearing that, I think probably the, the best way to proceed would be to, um, to make the motion uh, in the resolution and then see where things go. And um, I th from my perspective, it would make sense to uh, make that to, to put that uh, resolution forward in an undivided manner uh, uh, with a second, and then we would begin discussion on both. Mary Lynn, I think we need to conduct the candidate interview first and then take care of that. You're right. Yeah. My mistake. I am so sorry. Yeah, but after uh, <laughs> we get done with that, we will proceed. So at this time, I'd like to uh, uh, invite Todd Wolf to come to the podium and... We're open for questions. Which older person would like to go first? I've got a couple, Mayor. Go ahead, Jim. Uh, uh, Vice President Donahue sent out uh, an email today with the with the uh, the first the first interview questions, and then the second interview questions. I have it in front of me, but if, if Vice President uh, uh, Donahue has those in, handy in front of her, I would think we maybe could go over those five questions with Todd. Uh, I thought all of the questions in the first, the first round and the second round were very, very, very good questions. Uh, Mary Lynn, do you want me to read the questions or do you have them handy? Um, let me just check, Jim, why don't you pick out the one you think is the best and start with that, and we'll give uh, some of the other alders a chance to follow. All right. Uh, 
The first one, the first one, Todd, is you will be starting on the city's 2021 budget as soon as you begin the job. What what will be your approach to developing the budget? Well, Jim, that's a, obviously a really good question, and obviously I've I've heard this one before. Uh, the, the interesting part is there's quite a few um, portions of the budget that are obviously in in place and for review, and the management team, the direct the department heads have been tasked with with options for us to to review to continuously look at ways to reduce our budget. So. Not only are we looking at the budget for obviously next year, but we also have to look at the ripple effect that's going to be happening, you know, in 22, 23, and so on. So what we really need to do is we need to get together as a group. We need to see where we are with the, the latest numbers that Marty has been working on with his team. And we also need to work with the department heads and make sure that they've basically vetted all of their options to see what the best um, combination of savings that we can do and we need to look at it and see how is that savings going to be reflected in you know 21 22 and 23 and so forth and it also you know we need to look at um, the borrowing and the refinancing that that's also on the table and see if it, there's any additional options in that uh, in, in, those, in those areas also does that help you Jim yes it does just to follow up on that Todd uh, I've been asked by a couple constituents that have looked at, you know, have looked at your, your background and, and it's not really a concern to me, but a couple constituents that, uh, you know, you, you have an excellent resume, but it's a little short on municipal finance. And I, and I realize you've been on the finance committee for many years and even chaired the committee. But if there are any areas, if there are any areas in the municipal finance area where you think you may need some help, uh, what what uh, means will you take either through coursework or talking with contemporaries in other cities? If you need help in that area, what would you plan to do to address it? Very good question. Um, I've obviously I've been thinking about that significantly. There's there's groups within the uh, League of Municipalities that you can reach out to. I'll also be working with, uh, you know, Carol Worth, who has many years of, of experience working with, uh, I'll also be working through our, our groups, you know, with the CL, CLRA, is that how, I can't remember the acronym, but anyway, I'll be working with the auditing group that, uh, that we work with as a city. So we have great people within the city and we have great groups that we work with um, during our auditing process. And those are the, the areas that I'll be working with and learning very quickly on. Is there another question? Okay, thank you. Is there another question? Mayor, Barb Feldy. Please go ahead, Barb. Um, Todd, one of my concerns is strategic planning um, and the cost of some of the items that are on the strategic plan. Um, coming off of the COVID-19 and less income coming into the city. Um, and I know you said everybody's going to be looking at their budgets, but um, how willing are you to put some things on hold or move them out a year or two if it needs to be because we're having a money crunch in the city? I'm very willing. I mean, let's let's all face it. We all have budgets, whether it's personal or you know within the companies that we work. And we, we have to be able to ebb and flow, as I call it. And, you know, this, we're in unprecedented times. We're in a situation that none of us a year ago would have even thought of. So we, we've been doing a lot of great work as a city trying to get our hands wrapped around uh, some of the deficiencies from years ago. But we've always had the problem of planning for the future. So we have a strategic plan that we've been following. And we're at the end of that strategic plan, but we, we've got to start looking at, you know, revising it and, and potentially extending it. So my team and myself will be coming forward and we'll be talking about some of those options to the council and saying, okay, this is, this is what our plan is. This is what we've all agreed to. And this is where we see 
that we need to go, not just for, like I said, not just for 2021, but for 22 and 23 and, and so forth. We've got to, we have to plan, like I, I typically look at it, plan for the worst and hope for the best. Is there any other questions? Go ahead. I have another one, Mayor, from the list of the, of the second round. Uh, John, Jim, Jim uh, Ryan Sorensen is next. Oh, boy, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Todd, can you um, just talk about your, your kind of view of sustainability and conservation efforts with the city? And when you're looking um, at, you know, preserving parks or right now we have a, a lot of lakefront erosion, you know, yeah. um, what would you do as your role as a city administrator to prioritize sustainable efforts and initiatives within the city? It's a really good question. As we all know that the last time I believe the city actually did something in a large manner, um, with in particular with erosion, dates back to the to the mid '80s, mid to late '80s. Um, unfortunately, it's not something we have money laying around for at this time. So we, as a as a community, need to band together with other area communities along the the lake. We need to put pressure on on state and federal to say, hey, what what can you help us with, you know, whether it's grants or f federal funding or something, because the, this, the problem that we have in Sheboygan is not just Sheboygan related, it's all up and down the lake, it's everywhere. Um, I know that what we need to do is we need to reach out. We also need to plan for some of this stuff. I mean, we, we need to have a plan and, you know, the, wa the water will go down at some point, hopefully, and we still got to have it in our strategic plan for the future that we will address when economically we can and when um, just mechanically we can get to the, to the erosion areas. As far as parks and that, again, we are very fortunate to have as many parks as we do. Obviously, because of COVID, we've kind of locked things down a little bit, but things are starting to open up. But we, we need to continue to maintain them and we need to find better ways to um, to use these facilities and, and let people enjoy the, the great community that we have. Thank you. Okay, Alderperson Barn. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this is question number two from the second interview questions, a hypothetical. <clears throat> the, uh, the city's finance department has very significant issues in making the transition from a department head who ran the department for many years in her own individual manner the staff remaining after her departure is undertrained. Finan financial records are hard to ascertain. Monthly budget reports for departments are difficult to produce. What approach would you take putting the department back in order? Thank you, Jim. Very good question. Um, hypothetical is a really unique situation there that you guys are talking about. Uh, what I what I plan to do is obviously working with the department heads, not just, I mean, finance is obviously one of them that we have to work on, but we need to focus on training. We need to focus on the processes. Uh, the city of Sheboygan still is using the uh, AS400, I believe it's called. We've got to get off of that. We've been on um, Munis for over 10 years and we're not utilizing it correctly or to its optimum point. That's going to be a, a struggle for some departments, but we're going to work on it together. We're also going to make sure that we re review and update all of the job descriptions. We're going to be reviewing the processes that people are doing. Um, some of the things that I've seen in my career is you get, you get some longevity and people are doing the same thing year over year, even, even, if, the, even if it's not needed. So you don't realize it, but it's, it's one of those habit forming situations where they're just used to the day, you know, day in, day out, day in and day out situation. So we need to review and see, is everybody cross trained? Are they able to help each other? And are we doing the things that are needed? Or are we doing things that are maybe um, their, their wants, but not needs, you know, where's the data going? So we need to use technology, we need to make sure that the, the uh, that our employees have the training that they have the tools and that they understand what their expectations are and then we have to hold them accountable. Just like we have to be held accountable by, with what we do. Is there another question? Go ahead, Dean. Take the mask off, it's easier. Um, 
I'm going to borrow one from on from here because I would like to hear the answer on this one. Um, Sheboygan is becoming more, even more, ever more diverse in the next school year. Majority of students in the Sheboygan area school district will not be white. What opportunities and challenges do you see for the city as we become more diverse? What should city government's role or involvement be? A very good question. I, I, this is something that's, in my opinion, you know, not just the city and a community issue. It's a, it's a, it's a world issue. It's a, it's a country issue. We as a city need to be setting the stage. We need to be getting involved. We need to make sure that people understand that we, we want diversity. We, we, we're open arms to it. Um, today's a lot different than it was when I was a kid, and, and that's good. It, we need to grow. We need to change. Sheboygan is a great community. It's an old community. It's, it's you know, and this is going to sound a little cliche, but it's, I was going, I went to some meetings, be, um, it's a German-Russian group, and it's funny how I, it was explained to me that Sheboygan actually was kind of like a melting pot. There was a lot of Germans that came here, Dutch that came here, um, Russians, Greeks, I mean, you think about that, that's, that's amazing, the heritage and the ethnicity that we have here, but yet we don't realize it. We need to get more people involved with it. We need to be more open, open-minded, open, open hearts, and we have to, um, you know, get a group together that can help us spearhead that, spearhead that into the future. Thank you. Another question. I have a question. Go ahead, Mayor, Marcus. Uh, Marcus Fazio from the Fifth. Go ahead, Marcus. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Wolf, if you wouldn't uh, mind uh, indulging me for just a moment, uh, a presidency is set in the first 100 days. Uh, what is your plan over the first 100 days to make the best impact possible? Well, I'm, I'm hoping that it's not going to take 100 days, to be honest with you. Uh, we have so much that needs to be done so quickly. We have budgets that have to get reviewed, not just by the department heads and not just by finance, but also by the council. So my focus is going to be working very quickly on obviously our two, two large, large areas of concern. One is uh, obviously finance and uh, we need to get them structured a little bit better, but we've got to work with them. We're not broken. We just need to make some improvements, do some tune-ups. We're not going to rebuild everything overnight, but we need to define what, what is needed moving forward. What, uh, and, and that's also looking at CIP and uh, working with the department heads and finding out what we can do in strategically planning for the next couple of years, not just next year, but the years further. So, my 100 days is going to be introducing myself to everybody, making sure that we, we understand that there's new processes and, pra and practices that are going to be taking place, making sure everybody understands that communication is, is key, making sure that we are reviewing uh, the, the department needs and what the goals are, where are we with the goals that are, have been put in place by the prior city administrator, make sure that they have the, the tools and the um, resources to achieve those goals, make sure that those goals are actually still on target to what we want to do moving into the future, and making sure that uh, we, we make a plan for not just focusing on finance and HR, but also looking at other areas within the city that uh, we feel need to be addressed in a, in a quick manner. Does that help you, Marcus? Thank you. Thank you. Next question. Alder Person Sorensen. Thank you. Got got a few more. It's um, okay. They're popping up. Um, Todd, can you explain sort of your super, um, your supervisor sort of and management strategy? You know, how will accountability be different when you're working with the department heads, um, and how you change that moving forward? Very good question, um, Ryan. Uh, one of the things that I brought up uh, during the interview process is my. Um, it's going to sound kind of funny, but I have five steps. So. I'm, I am somebody that, I'm the kind of person that gets in the trenches, works with people. I like to understand the processes and practices so that I can help coach, mentor, train. So part of my five steps is basically the first step is coaching. So I believe in coaching. Coaching is where you basically are working with somebody, um, just you know, in the office you're giving some, some uh, tidbits of uh, 
maybe some improvement areas or uh, some training on some things, but it's, it's really open and, and it happens daily. Um, those are things that everybody should be doing, whether it's department uh, within the departments or departments helping other departments. And it's, it's team building and it's communication and it's making sure people have that openness. The next step is number two is, is mentoring. So you go from coaching to mentoring. Mentoring means that you really, you're, you're, you're doing a much closer um, review of, of assisting somebody. You might find out that somebody doesn't have some training in, let's say, Munis, and that's why they don't want to switch over to Munis. So maybe we work with them on that. Maybe it's internal um, help, you know, work, working with some other people that are doing similar jobs. But it's, it's a much more hand-to-hand -hand kind of uh, situation. So you have coaching and mentoring. The third one is training. And where training comes in is making sure that, that the employees have the tools that they need. And that typically when you're done with coaching and mentoring, the deficiencies or the, the missing link is basically identified. Coach, mentor, train, those three should be cyclical. They should always be happening for all of us, whether it's me, you, or any of the city employees, we should always be coach, mentoring, training everybody within the, the group. And the reason for that is you're gonna continuously make each person better with everything that they do. Unfortunately, step four is basically discipline. Discipline isn't always a negative. It's perceived as a negative, but it's still a, it's still a building tool. And that's why you have different steps within discipline. The whole concept, and we've all been disciplined um, at some point, you get that aha moment. You realize that, oh my gosh, my boss really does mean I've got to do this. This is part of my job. So you have your coaching, your mentoring, your training, and sometimes it does go to discipline. 99% of the time when that happens, the person has that aha moment and a choice is made and they, they, they get it, they understand. This is, this is the vision, this is the mission of what we need to do here. Sometimes though, you have the fifth step and that's dismissal. Sometimes that's a hard decision, but what I found in my career is typically when I get to the fifth step, either the employee has moved on, they've resigned because they realize that the job that's expected and what they want to do don't basically align, so they move on on their own. Sometimes you still have to sit down with that person and ha have them understand that things have changed, we've taken these steps, and it's just not a good fit. So those are my five steps. And for me, in my, in my career in management, it's been a very, very good success, and I've, I've I've, I've never had anybody sitting in my office going, I didn't see it coming. Or I've had people that have left and said, you know, Todd, it's just, it's not you, it's me. It's just, you know, not that we're dating, but it's, it's we need to move on. And they realize that it's not the direction they want to go. So that's kind of, that's real quickly, that's my management tactic and, and explanation. All right. Another, I got another one. Um, so Please right proceed. now we have... Um, an empty industrial business park. Um, and with the national recession that we're enduring and with everything going on with the coronavirus, um, you know, it, it is it's gonna be a difficult task to, to, to recruit and find, you know, businesses that want to re relocate there. And as a city, we have to make some pretty big payments coming up um, to support the business park. So I guess, what, is, what would be your approach to work with our, our planning and development office um, and hopefully attracting and, and recruiting businesses to that park? During this, you know, even with this challenge yep. um, that, nope. that we're facing it's, in the country. Companies are, are globally are having to recreate themselves. Um, I totally agree. We, we did a great job as a city, uh, you know, developing the industrial park for continued growth. The city does need that for, for the future. It's unfortunate that we weren't able to land some uh, some businesses prior to that. But I, from what I understand in industry with, with my background, um, businesses are recreating themselves. But the benefit of the COVID for the United States is that businesses that were once promoted to be um, off sea, offshore are now coming back. So. I really think that what's going to happen is, and we've got a great work ethic within the Midwest, within Sheboygan County. We have some great companies within our community. 
there's a lot of companies that are going to start pulling their, those factories back to the U.S. And there's a lot of stuff that's going to change. So we need to promote the fact that we're here, we're shovel ready, we, we have the community, we have the support, we have the infrastructure, everything is here. Um, and and it, it will come back. We, we built it, it will come. It's, we just have to make sure that we're marketing it right, that we're communicating with these companies. And we've got to put our hand on the pulse and we've got to watch what's going on. It's amazing how quickly things are changing and how quickly the United States and companies realized how dependent we are on other countries, you know, not just Asia, but other, other countries in, in general. And nobody wants to be caught like this again. So I think the benefit that we're gonna see is you're gonna see the need for automation, the need for manufacturing, the need for hardworking individuals, and all of that, plus many other things, are here in Sheboygan County already. So we just have to expand on it. Thank you. Any other questions? Mayor Barb Feldy. Yes, Barb, please go ahead. Okay, I'm going to go there. The number one survey question is Rose in Sheboygan. We're still chasing that down. <laughs> um, and seeing it's still at the number one, I want to know Todd has... He's been an older person for long enough, and now is looking at a city administrator. Um, what can you do to make sure we can get more of these roads fixed? Well, first off, roads are one of my pet peeves if, for anybody that, that talks to me about it. What we need to do as a, as a council and as a city is we need to have a, a realistic plan. We need to actually have a budget that actually says, okay, it's gonna, we've got two, what, 216 miles of, of roads in Sheboygan, not counting alleys and things like that. But we gotta put a plan together. It might be a 10 year plan, it might be a 20 year plan, but we need to get everybody to understand this is what the plan is, and this is how much it's gonna cost. And then we've gotta start finding ways to budget that money so that it's, we know we're not gonna get it overnight, but at least we know we're nibbling at it. And if we're not putting this much money in, we're gonna, it's gonna go from say, 20 years to 21 years. At least then you guys know what the ramification is. There's too many things I think that in the future we need to have a better understanding of what the cost benefit is for projects, whether it's part of our strategic plan or part of our just overall infrastructure of, of yearly maintaining it. I don't, in the years ago, there was really never a de designated amount of money that was put to roads guaranteed. It wasn't like $10 million a year or something. I'm just making that up, but there was, it was never uh, defined and locked in. So when things started going south, people would just pull and sh shuffle and move things around. We need to have a plan, whether we like it or not, we have to have a plan. And then once we have that plan, if somebody says, hey, you know what, and again, I'm just making this up. If it's a 20 year plan and someone says, I can't wait 20 years, well, then we've got to look at what what can we give? Where can we pull some money from? What's it going to cost to take it from a 20-year to a 15-year plan? We we right now we just don't know. And things have changed. We we do a lot more of the roads ourselves, um, as far as you know overlays and things like that. But we also know that the roads are crumbling faster than we're f paving them and fixing them. So we need to know what that's going to look like in the in the near future. Thank you. Next question. I have another question, Mayor. Uh, ahead, Alderman Boren. Uh, Todd, <clears throat> this, this position is all encompassing and you've got a tremendous amount on your plate. And I really appreciate the high energy level I've seen from you over the years that I've served with you. But my question is, uh, once you get into this for you know a month or so, do you think you're going to need uh, an, an assistant to the city administrator? Uh, what do you think you might be able to delegate, and what would you be looking for in that person if you if you need an assistant? I believe Daryl has one or had one, and uh, just give me an idea of what you would be looking for and maybe what that person could help you with. Thank you. I, I do agree that uh, the city administrator's position does need uh, assistance, and um, Daryl, Mr. Hoffland had, had that assistance. 
uh, for the majority of the time that he's been here. But he, that assistance was also uh, feathered into uh, the finance department. And we need to get assistance into finance. So to me, we should be able to do the same thing that we were before, bring somebody in that can help out in finance and also with budgets and knows Munis and we can, and obviously can help, uh, help me with reports and stuff like that that are gonna be needed to keep the communication open with everybody as far as like we've been doing. I wanna keep going with the great reports that Daryl has worked very hard with his team to develop. Thank you for that question. Anyone else? I have a question. Older person Phillips here. Go ahead. Thank you. Todd, looking um, at the budget moving forward and understanding that we are going to have a somewhat loss, at least of revenue, um, for example, looking at room tax and how that might look going into the, the summer months. A lot of um, businesses are facing this challenge and having to make contingency plans and reduce expenses. Have you personally put any thought into areas of the city budget where we could reduce our expenses? Yes, uh, it, it's going to be a diff difficult discussion on that topic just because of the fact that the city over the, over the years has continued to downsize as I call it. Uh, we do have to understand that, you know, the city provides a service to the constituents and that's what they pay us for. So we, we as, a, as a city need to make sure that we're optimizing our, our resources, optimizing our, our services, but we also need to look at the services and find out if, again, you know, using the cliche, their needs and wants, it, are they things that are that are nice to have or things that they need to have. Um, we, the city does a great job with all of the things that we're doing, but there may be some areas that uh, constituents really don't value as much as uh, we do. We need to also look at technology and, and see what we're doing and see if there's ways that we can automate things so that these services can be continued but at a lower cost uh, from the city's perspective. Again, the city is like a business. We are a business. We need to continuously look at how we do things and make sure that we're doing them as efficiently and as effectively as possible. And those are, those are things that we need to do and review together as a council and as a city administrator and find areas that we can potentially make some cuts. Thank you. Another question? Well, if there's no other questions, then we can <coughs> proceed on to the uh, item 4.2, which is resolution number 40 of 2021 by Alder Persons Donahue and Sorensen to appoint Todd Wolf as the new city administrator effective July 7th of 2020 and authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into an employment agreement with Todd Wolf. Alder Person Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. Um, at this point, I would move to suspend the rules and adopt the resolution. The, the um, uh, reason for suspension is that um, Administrator Hofflin will, his last day will be July 3rd and we need to move with due speed. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, then we have a motion from Alder Donahue and a second by Alder Sorensen. That item is before us for discussion. I would like to make a comment, please. Please go ahead. Thank you. I, I just wanted to express um, a little bit of disappointment in the process, although I do think um, Todd is a very qualified candidate and uh, has many of the characteristics uh, that I think we are all looking for. And I do have faith in the members of the search committee that they've done a very fine job. 
I just think there was a little um, lack of communication between the search committee and the rest of the council. I didn't, you know, last we talked, it was, um, we're looking for a new city administrator and, and what are what are we looking for in that city administrator? And now here we are, we've got one, one um, applicant before us. I know that it was a process of being narrowed down, but I, I would have preferred to see the top few candidates uh, be brought forward to the council or at least have had some communication or discussion or an opportunity to maybe review and compare um, some of the top candidates. So I, I just wanted to make sure that I shared that concern that I have. Um, and again, that's not to say that I don't think um, Todd is a qualified candidate, because I do. Thank you for those comments. Is there any other discussion? Uh, Mayor, I just wanted to mention one thing. I uh, had some discussions. Uh, had some discussions with our HR director today, and Vicky was very kind to not only uh, we all were aware of what the starting salary was going to be of one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, but I asked uh, I asked Vicky what the total package would be, and the total package for Todd, including health insurance, uh, de dental insurance. And our, the city's contribution to the Wisconsin Retirement Service, the total package for, for Todd will be $186,606 for, uh, for, for his contract. And uh, that does not really surprise me. Uh, and I think for, you know, for a qualified individual, we have to, we have to step forward and, and give, give our city administrator that support but I just wanted to let the council know if they if they hadn't done the research themselves that that's what the that's what our, our, our all in cost is going to be for the city administrator. Thank you. Thank you, Jim, for those comments. Any other discussion? Uh, Mayor, I just want to, uh, if I could, uh, I'm going to support Todd tonight for this position. And the reason I'm going to support Todd is I think it's very important that we have a, 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 a candidate for city administrator that come in, that can come in and uh, hit the ground running. Uh, if we would have had an outside candidate, and I'm sure there was a couple of them that were pretty good, but the problem there is you're going to have a candidate coming in that is going to probably take a year to get up to speed. And Todd has the background with being an alder and working with many, many of the department heads, either being a chairman of, of the respective committee or building relationships with them since he's been on the council. And I think that's going to be invaluable as we go forward that Todd can hit, uh, you know, can get off to a, a fast start and make some changes that are necessary and dig in and work on this very difficult 2021 budget. So I have, uh, you know, I have no, uh, I, I'm convinced that he's the right candidate and I'm convinced he's going to do an outstanding job for us. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Sorensen? Okay. okay. Any other comments or discussion? Well, with that, I'll ask the clerk to please call a roll. Ackley? Aye. Foran? Aye. Decker? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Feldy? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Phillips? Aye. Savaglio? Aye. Sorensen? Aye. There are nine ayes. Motion passes unanimously. Congratulations, Todd Wolf. We have a, a nameplate down here that you can take home for your past experience on our city council. Mayor? Yes. Okay, Todd, you have some comments you'd like to make? All right, uh, Mayor, City Council, City Attorney, if you can see me, um, and City of Sheboygan residents. 
It is with great gratitude and council support that I have uh, been chosen to, the, to take this position as city administrator for our great city starting July 7th. I am taking this position at a time of great change, uncertainty, and questioning about, the li about uh, our lives together. As the past alder and council president, I have assisted in our development and growth. I've always been conscious of enforcing best practices and budgetary stewardship. Our future path will be exciting and laborious for all, for all of us as we are in an uncharted times. Our future path, our, our overall views of the pandemic, our local and state and uh, economies will all provide opportunities and challenges as we move forward. I personally bring years of business management and leadership that will assist, uh, will assist us in future growth and development while working with the city's department heads. We, we will be reviewing and working together as a team to determine the, and develop a strategy for, for the areas that need to be the quickest and most attention. Additionally, there has been a, a righteous demand from people in our community, that we look at how to do business with each other, how we treat each other, what is in our hearts about how we are different and how we are the same in what we want for our families, our prosperity, our sense of what is what living in our city is all about. I have much to learn about these issues, but I, but it is my pledge to you here in, in, this, in the community that the city government, each department in the city, will in weeks, months, and years look deeply into the diversity means to us and, and equity looks, looks like. How we are to conduct our business to ensure a just and equitable and inclusive community for everyone who lives here. Thanks again, and together, and only together, we can continue to help make our city community open to all to live, work, and play together. Thank you. Thank you, Todd. <laughs> Next of adjournment, Alder Donahue. So moved. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We stand adjourned. Thank you for your time tonight. <coughs>